for the first time, I'm a member of the jury. Uh, it's a new experience for me, but it's something, it's a role and responsibility that I'm, I'm taking seriously. Uh, you know, I obviously didn't get as far in the game as I'd hoped, but for me, it's, it's important that the person who ends up winning this season is someone that uh, I think we all collectively feel is both a deserving winner, someone who played a really good game, and someone who can represent all the other winners, and more broadly, just Survivor generally. I mean, this is going to be the winner of winners, and uh, I think we all want to feel that the person who wins not only deserved it by playing a strong game, but will also use a platform in a way that I think represents all of us and, and the brand itself in a positive light. So with Natalie, you know, I think she's played a very strong game. Uh, she crushed it on Extinction Island in terms of finding all the advantages, massing tokens. I mean, she's kind of like the guy, the, the person who wins Monopoly, right? Like they, she owns all the properties and <laughs> she had everything. So, and she was a strong competitor. I mean, just the, the intestinal fortitude you need to get voted out on the first tribal and just grit it out on Extinction Island is like super impressive. Like, so I'm in awe of that. Like, man, she has a reservoir of like determination that's just inspiring. Tony, I think, People, for the most part, has played a very strong game. Uh, the thing that's impressive about Tony is, to the ex is the extent to which he's changed his approach from his prior seasons. That's something that I think everyone has really been impressed with. So, you know, Tony, the first time he played, played a really cutthroat, devious, confusing game. He was throwing kind of like, I mean, he was just like this ball of motion, and you never knew what he was going to do. And he was able to use his unpredictability and the fact that people didn't really know his gameplay to get to the end and to win. Second time he played, he started off doing that unpredictable thing and just blew up and he got booted early. This time around, he's played a completely different game. Like he's been not erratic and predictable. He's actually been, or, well, let me qualify that. Tony is Tony. So there's only so much <laughs> predictability you can have with Tony. So he still can be a wild pinball. You're trying to guess where he's gonna go. But the energy is different. He, he's been able to project a level of stability and calm and connect with people on a deeper level than he's done in the past. And I think that's really played to his benefit. So as far as we can tell, based on what we've seen so far, Tony has played a very strong, masterful game. He's been behind many, many votes and has been in the dominant alliance. He's had a string of uh, immunity run or immunity victories, which is also impressive in their own right. He's had hidden meeting idols. He's been playing things in a really, really, uh, he's been playing very smoothly and for the most part seems to have been in control. Uh, so I think Tony is clearly the front runner right now. In terms of what I would want to hear from him, it would just be a validation of what people already see and expect. Uh, so I think if his final trial, tribal council answers affirm and validate the perception that people already have of him and the perception that I have, I think he's probably going to win. Uh, things that might blow up his game is if it turns out he actually can't really articulate what his strategy was and it, if it is actually revealed that he was not in control of the game or that, for example, Sarah was the one who actually called the strategic shots and he was just maybe the most visible person, but it was really her or someone else behind the scenes that was the dominant brain and force behind their dominant alliance. Michelle, I think, is going to have a hard time. I think there is this perception that she has not controlled the game at all, that she's been a final three goat, that she's kind of been brought along and was never really in control of anything. I think her strongest argument will be that she just survived everything. She was always on the out. She was always on the bubble. Uh, she was always in the weaker alliance or just all alone. And through just sheer grit, she was able to just continue grinding and grinding and winning immunities or getting idols at the right time and playing them and, you know, making it to the end. I think that's the strongest argument.